Okay guys, I'm gonna do my best to power through this one. Here's what happened. I asked the guys at the shop to do a video for me because I didn't have time today. This is what they came up with. They got this over the shoulder idea. I wasn't real fond of it, uh, but I think I just want more still shot, but this, not too bad. Take a look, see what we got. Tell me what you think in the comments. First things first, this is what we're dealing with right here. Hey, and one more thing. If you haven't subscribed, do it now. Seriously, do it right now. I'm going to get this one done fast because I'm heading out to Vegas for MTE 2019 here in, I don't know, some hours. So here's what we're looking at. So right here on the edge, this bottom is actually kicked down a hair. Now, it's not immediately obvious from the pictures that we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to distort this image a little bit to over-exaggerate what's actually going on here. So there you go. There's that hump that we're looking at. Now, there's going to be a ton, a ton of pressure. So... Again, this is enlarged. This is not actually what's going on. I use some fancy movie magic for this. So the edge of the panel is going to hold a lot more pressure anyways. Now, we kick it out and down like that, it's going to be even more so. We really need to relieve that. Let's take a look at the dent map. And before you ask, yes, I got your emails, I got your text messages, I got everything. No, I didn't listen to it, but yes, I do know that another group has stolen my whole dent map thing, uh, my whole fuck average thing, whatever. But here's the thing. I know, and the thing is they should because it's both good ideas. They're both good concepts. A ton of my students have benefited from both already. Now, am I concerned about this? Well, it is my jam, but the real deal is I have proven time and time again in all areas other than promotion, my execution's better. So no, no, I'm not worried about anything. There's a huge difference between having a conceptual idea of what a dent map is and a deep understanding because, well, you created the idea and you're trying to perfect it. Like this, moving on. If I were gonna to put together a pressure map, it would look something like this in its dent. Notice how the bottom areas there are holding the most pressure. There is the crown areas that have some pressure, and then that green is gonna be pretty loosey-goosey. Now remember, whenever I tell you, when you make your dent map, understand that there's a real good chance that you're gonna be wrong. Now, Casper is actually gonna be the repair technician in this situation, but here's what I would do. I would go ahead and kick that bottom bump back up in. Now that I've released some pressure in the middle, the deepest section there, I'm going to go ahead and push that out. Then what we should be seeing is everything loosen up and those edges are going to start to come in quite a bit. Also, if I have any crown work that needs done, this is about the time I'm going to tackle it. Again, this is just the idea that I like to get into my head before I start to do a repair. It's kind of a visualize and attack thing. Now, this is also looking at it through a computer monitor. Casper might end up seeing completely different in person. So let's see how close our, my debt map was to Casper's. And hopefully during that time I was just blabbing, you were putting together your own dent map. Maybe it varied a little bit from mine. That's okay. Nobody's dent map is usually going to be right all the time. As a matter of fact, as I'm talking, I see that Casper went ahead and went straight for the crown work. Ballsy plan, Casper. Let's see if it pays off. I didn't see a whole ton of movement there, and there you go, Casper. So he's using my slapper tapper as some kind of dolly to do this, which is absolutely wrong, you jerk. Uh, here, yep, okay, there we go. So there he's got my hammer. Now that hammer, the one end of it's covered in edgy tape. You don't want to be going metal on metal here. A couple layers of edgy tape will soften it up a hair, but mostly just keep from chipping the paint on the bottom. Now, I went ahead and replayed this several times over. This is the same clip. You can actually see those edges start to move in as that bottom pressure is relieved. So now as you know what you're looking for, here's the whole sequence again. So watch those edges pull in as that pressure is relieved. So, you know, that, that pressure that was kicked down and outside of where that metal would have been at all before it was impacted. Now, we're going to be working pretty intimately with the edge of this panel. A lot of this damaged area is right there close to the edge. It's going to hold a lot of pressure, so heat is of the utmost importance. Any area like that where it's a bunch of pressure and you're going to be pushing, make sure you heat it up. Now, I will slow this down and show you Casper's access that he's using here in a minute, but he's using an Excalibur tool. It's a big U-shape type tool. They didn't get a good shot of it, but if you look it up on Excalibur's website, uh, it's the rail tool. Um, he didn't cover it up with any kind of tape. I probably would have started off with some tape on the end. Again, just to soften it up a hair. Now, how hot does he get in that panel? We use the feel method. So basically, I want it to be almost too hot to touch. That's how I know that that panel's hot enough. That actually does loosen up the metal some, but mostly keeps the clear coat pliable so you don't break it. So here's his access. This is what he's using. So this tool is really long and hooky. Hooky, of course, being a highly technical term. Uh, 
U-shaped. How about that? U-shaped. So what's he doing here? It looks like he's knocking down. So whenever you do kick that bottom edge up, a lot of times you will get kind of a rounded shape towards uh, the bottom edge there. Basically, you're you're putting metal back where it should be, but there's other metal that's preventing it from going up. You just, you create a little hump. Using your knockdown like this, especially a flat knockdown. He's using the silencer from Dead on Dent Tools, it looks like. I'd probably use a knocker or something like that. Um, and here's doing a little more crown work. Looks like he's using his carbon tech. With this, I probably would have opted for something like a craftsman hammer. For me, anytime that it looks like it's kind of a, a hardish kind of crown, I'll pull a soft tip on it. But then again, anytime I'm looking for any sort of real, real accuracy, a harder tip uh, like that carbon tech is going to be your better bet. So more crown work here, just trying to get that contour correct. On a dent like this, what you're going to find is you're going to relieve some pressure out of the middle. And a lot of that metal is going to be displaced into your crowns and you're going to do a lot of crown work. And you will spend probably 70% or better of your time, if you're doing this correctly, on crown work, which is a great thing because it's a lot easier to move crowns around without causing texture than it is to push without causing texture. So thus far, uh, other than some tips and tool choices, Casper's pretty much right on par with what I would have done. Not really surprised. He has been my longest running student. He came to learn some stuff and I liked him, so he stuck around. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and tell the world Casper has actually bought in to my company, JM Dent Repair. Congratulations, Casper. You're an owner now. Which means that he gets to take over all of the bullshit boss work that I don't want to do and I get to do dents and videos. <laughs> Sucker. All right, so again, right there in that middle, just relieving some pressure. You're not going to find that you're going to actually push a whole lot of this dent. So that middle area is going to be holding the bulk of that pressure, that metal that needs moved around. So as you bring that up, you're really going to lay down crowns flat. And it's not like you see the, the original size of this dent. It's not like you're going to be pushing that entire thing. Uh, again, if you're doing it right, that's not how it's going to turn out. So another thing to mention, since he is using that carbon tech uh, as his crown hammer there, this isn't necessarily blending per se, but you should probably keep the same idea in mind as you do when you're blending. You are not looking to put big divots. You're not looking to make this thing look like a freaking golf ball. Um, make sure that you're using just enough force on that thing to get some metal moving. Also, remember, this isn't perpendicular movement. This isn't just up and down, side to side. You can actually flow this metal depending on where and how hard you hit. So on realworldpdr.com, we do have a really great lesson on this. I call it one of my million dollar tips on how to get crowns to work with you. For instance, I even show you with uh, body line damage or even some crease damage, how if there's crowns available to you, you can actually fill up that dent with displaced metal before you ever touch a pushing tool. So it's real handy to get a body line dent, you know, finished to 70% before you ever push on it. This stuff is real fun and amazing to watch. If you really take time to realize that Casper has not moved out of that one spot that he's been pushing this entire time. He has not pushed anywhere up higher, anywhere down lower. It's just in this one spot, getting that pressure to release up and outwards. Once there's not enough pressure available to him, then he'll have to start doing some cleanup work just like this outside of that area. It's just a neat concept though, finding that one area, sticking to it and really just tiny little pinpricks over and over and over again is actually releasing that, that pressure and that's what's making this dent go away, all from pushing in one spot. I don't know. I think it's neat, but I also think weird stuff's neat because dents are awesome. This also sticks fairly well to my one event idea. That is, you want to get everything to one level. Your crowns, your lows, you want to get everything, even if it's a big low. Uh, because what's going to happen then is the metal is going to be a lot more relaxed and pliable at that point. You're not going to have areas of high pressure or low pressure. Everything's going to be one event, one level. And it's going to be much easier to sculpt the way you want it to from there. And additionally, it's going to be able to be sculpted without jacking up your texture so much. So this is something that Sal Contreras told me, well, in a video. See how I do that? I give credit to the people who come up with these things. How about this? How about to maintain our best texture, we never screw it up to begin with? On that note, here is the texture that Casper has come up with. Now, that is not bad. That is absolutely, completely, 100% normal, as long as you keep it tiny and manageable. If we had a rod that was soft tip that could have reached this location, um, obviously that would have been the tool that Casper chose and that would have been avoidable. 
Wasn't the case here. We didn't have a tool that was going to reach it appropriately like that. So he had to expect some kind of texture. I do think, Casper, if you're listening, some of that test of tape on the end there might have helped that out a bit. But all things considered, that is completely acceptable. It's definitely the kind of thing that you're going to want to put a little bit of toll cut on at the very end just to make sure everything's going well. But it's not one of those things you have to toll cut to death where you leave a big slick spot. So what do we got going on here, Casper? Yep, no, he's pretty much down to just that low area, the deepest point of that impacted spot. Now, there's a lot of pressure there, too, because you got those two edges coming together. Not a whole lot of metal movement, which creates that pressure, that, that resistance that when you're pushing that will make it a little more prone to causing that texture. And hey, complete noobs, when you're on your practice hood, okay, take a, check out that texture real quick. Yep, okay. When you're on your practice hood, figure out where those places are that you're gonna feel more of that resistance. If you're not a complete noob, but you're not, you know, you don't have your dent map completely figured out, figure out as you're working on your vehicles, your customer vehicles, where is that pressure? Where, what kind of situations, what kind of structure causes that pressure where you need to be a lot more careful with your texture. It's good to be cognizant of all these kind of things. Having these ideas, thoughts, this knowledge kind of ever present in your mind will make you a much better technician. So here Casper's gonna put a bit of a sand on this. Now this is probably just kind of a, a light sand just to knock those heads off the best you can. Um, what's great about that is that clears up your dent. Now, what it does is kind of puts your, it's like a, the most clear version of your dent because as you start getting that texture it starts kind of making it difficult to see what's really high and what's really low i did want to shout out the get a grip from or the strong arm from get a grip it's a great product we use it all around the shop in fact i use it to hold cameras sometimes super versatile you should probably get one so i want to point out what that light sand did what it did is it made it so instead of seeing just kind of a jumble of of texture what you're going to see is a pretty pronounced low spot that was difficult right in there hold on i'll put a circle there you go so right in there that's where it was difficult to see before because there was just so many ups and downs that it was kind of camouflaging that but now that he's put that very 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 extremely light sand on it it's obvious now you can really tell that it was a light sand because the orange peel in the paint is still there yes i know that was a typo sanding too late to change it now we've got a mobile tech expo to go to so here he is this is just his fine tuning work man he's just going through picking up these little micro lows looks like he has done a hell of a job on this dent um this isn't necessarily an easy dent i would say this is definitely an intermediate style dent especially with the kind of access he's using i'm not sure on this model of vehicle why he didn't try through the taillight uh, maybe he thought that this was going to be good enough, but I don't know. You dropped a whole bumper. Might as well try the taillight. But I'm not going to judge second guess or question too much because I wasn't there. Um, looks like coming up, he is going to give this thing one final light sand. Now, really, really, you need to be careful whenever you're doing this kind of thing. Uh, multiple sandings, but I trust him. He knows what a light sand is and what's not. He actually painted bumpers before he got into PDR. Well, and he is still going. Come on, Casper, let's wrap it on up now. Whenever you're ready. So let me th let me know what you think about this over the shoulder kind of format that we have going on here. Um, so there is, this one wasn't up to snuff. This definitely wasn't something I was gonna put on the training page, uh, but we did one immediately after this. It's about five times longer. Uh, not quite five, it's 45 minutes. So I guess that'd make about three times longer. Uh, it's about the same kind of damage, but we were able to go crazy, crazy, crazy in depth because it wasn't moving around so much in every single shot like this one was. This is why I hate this one. And uh, we went step by step every little bit. Casper does his dent map on the panel for you. You actually get to see exactly what Casper's doing, what he's thinking throughout this entire dent. It's a really cool, it's a really cool format. It's a really cool video. I hope you guys check it out at realworldpdr.com. Man, he's getting back in that corner now. Oh, he's going to give it a third sand. Oh, my word, Jasper. Now, I will concede to his knowledge on paint because this is what he did. But right here, anywhere that you're towards the edge of a panel, you really got to watch out whenever you're sanding because the edges have a natural tendency to kick out. So you'll actually be hitting that edge a lot harder than you're hitting everything else. And I would be nervous doing that three times. Looks like everything turned out just fine for him, but... Keep that in mind. Anytime you're close to an edge of a panel or a body line or something like that, if you are going to put a sand on that, keep it light. Keep it real light. 
So here's where he started out. This is the damage that he was working with before and still before, still before, still before and after. Really good job, Casper. That is a fabulous finished product there. Um, I really think that speaks uh, mostly to my training of you, Casper. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for joining me on this. Sorry, I just burned through that one. Like I said, I have a bunch to do before I take off on a jet plane here soon. Bye.